Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> you ready? Sure. Right. <laughs> it's okay. You can't blame them for that. It goes with the territory. So, hey, folks. Uh, I'm Waldo, um, an evangelist for Data Dog, and we're hiring. And we're hiring, and we're hiring. Uh, I'm not a North Carolina native, but I did live in New Bern for eight years, and I kind of miss it here sometimes. So let's talk about arguing better. Have you ever seen a disagreement uh, turn into an argument and then spin out of control? Or somebody said, uh, took something that you said, uh, it got the wrong meaning from it, and just got really mad about it? Me neither. In the early 2000s, I was in the Marine Corps, and I had just gotten married. Um, at the time, the Marine Corps had a much higher divorce rate than the general population. And things like divorces and domestic disputes were taking away a lot of people's energy and attention, decreasing both individual and unit readiness. Um, the base chaplains came up with a solution that was a two-day seminar on getting along, uh, and I'm going to distill the useful parts into five minutes for you. One of the keys to active listening is the token. The person holding the token is the only person who speaks. When the token holder is done, they surrender it to the other person. The token can be anything that can be held in the hand. <laughs> to be avoided are things that might be weaponized or, or break things if they're thrown. I find that pot holders are really good token uh, because they have a good weight to them if you do hit somebody or throw them. But let's meet Sam and Terry. Sam and Terry are any two people. They could be DevNops, they could be significant others, they could be neighbors, it doesn't matter. Sam has a complaint, and they need Terry to hear it. So Sam and Terry sit down, and Sam identifies the token. I generally don't recommend you anything flaming either, but that's what we have. But Sam states the problem. Terry, being a good actor, listens. When Sam has stated their point, Terry has handed the token, and now it's Terry's time, uh, opportunity to respond, to speak. But they don't respond to the complaint. Terry's job at this phase is to repeat back what Terry thinks that Sam is saying. Terry may also ask Sam to clarify things that, that they may not fully grasp. And then Terry returns the token to Sam. Terry probably won't get this right the first time. Sam will correct or clarify and then return the token to Terry. And Terry tries again. This repeats it until Sam is satisfied that Terry fully understands what Sam is trying to say. And now that Terry's understanding of what Sam's complaint, uh, complaint is confirmed, Terry finally gets to respond to the complaint. The token trades hands, and again, Sam must now paraphrase what Sam thought Terry said. Terry now clarifies or confirms until, and this goes back and forth until they both agree that they understand one another. Now the two can start working towards a resolution. Now this has been six slides and so far each person's made one statement. But due to the back and forth statement, restatement, uh, confirmation, the pace of the argument is kept low and it makes it a lot harder for emotions to boil over. This is a slow process, but that's also a feature of it. By making the role of speaker and listener explicit and grinding the pace down until, uh, until you have confirmation of understanding, it becomes everybody's best interest to listen when it's their turn. Some things to avoid are hyperbole, um, like saying always or never, um, broad or overarching statements like you are a slob rather than I hate it when you don't put your dirty clothes in the laundry. Now arguments aren't necessarily a bad thing, um, but if they're harmful or unproductive, if nothing gets resolved, um, nothing gets addressed, like it's wasteful. Active listening is very easy to be brought down by a bad actor. And I like to think that this is a feature rather than a flaw. Because there are plenty of ways to be a bad actor in this scenario, but there's only one good way to actually participate in active listening. So why does this work? Because it slows down the pace of the argument, 
at making heated escalations less likely. And by assuring that you'll be heard and understood, people can take the time and listen to what is being said instead of waiting for their turn to make a quip. And as fun as quipping or being sarcastic is, uh, talking past one another isn't a great way to communicate. What we usually want is to be heard and understood. Thank you for your attention, and I hope that this helps you to argue better.